Here's a quick meditation before we talk to you. Go ahead. So, I've been given the daunting task of talking about something very serious and not very funny for about five minutes. So, I'm going to talk about addiction for a little bit. And I thought about talking about it in terms of I used to teach where I went to college. And what I don't want to do is give you a bunch of statistics and diagnosis stats that I want to stick with you. I'm going to talk about a personal story. I'm going to talk about my mom. That's not my mom. That's my mom. <laughs> Come on, Spider. There she is. This is Tink. Hi, Tink. Um, she was a really great mom. She was a musician. She was a poet. She also had a lifelong struggle with addiction and alcoholism. Uh, my brother has a memory of her being too intoxicated to pick him up from a baseball practice. She then switched to prescription diet pills. And from that and a lifelong smoking habit, she had a heart attack and passed away. When she was 52, I was 23 years old. And that left me with two really big questions. Um, where did this come from? How did this happen? And the other question is, why did anybody do anything? She was surrounded by people all the time, and no one ever said anything. So the first question, how did this happen, as illustrated by this baby in the matrix, um, it's about, part of it is about genetics. When I had surgery, I had opiates as a, as a pain reliever. My body hated it. I felt like I just stepped off of a roller coaster. I felt nauseous and out of control and didn't like it. Some people take opiates and it's the best feeling they've ever had in the entire world. And that's just how it hits our bodies and we can't really control that. Another important aspect of this really complex thing called addiction is how we grew up. My mom's father was alcoholic and he took his own life um, when she was very young, and my mother experienced a lot of abuse and neglect. And that's kind of a setup. You have all of this pain that you're living with as an adult, and then there's this thing that makes you feel amazing. And then my question was, is there a way out of it? Was, was there another choice in this um, for a really long time? There are two kinds of suffering. There is a suffering you run away from, which follows you everywhere, and there's a suffering you face directly, and so it becomes free. And that creates a choice and a segue to what's known as recovery. Recovery is many things, it is not easy, it's not simple, it is not prescriptive, um, it is not a line that you cross and all the drugs are gone. Um, it is a path, it's a journey. It is sometimes multiple choices, difficult choices, every day. And it's really, really hard. But it's, it's another way of doing it that my mother didn't know about. Some people say that it is more difficult to get into recovery alone. Some people say it's impossible. As has been talked about earlier today, but this is a really painful indication of sometimes when somebody is suffering from whatever, whether it be addiction or anything, depression, a lot of people don't know how to approach this subject, and so they get left alone. What are the tools? What, how does somebody get into recovery? How does somebody step into it? What, what happens? Well, said the therapist, one good option is dinner. There's therapy. Uh, having a good therapist can be a chance to talk about really scary, shameful things in a, in a safe space. It's also a place to educate yourself about this disease, about this condition. And knowledge is power. Another, another opportunity is peer recovery. There are individuals that have done this work, that have a year to recovery from their belt, and have walked down those dark alleys and have had those conversations, and they want to help you. Vermont has an amazing system of care for peer recovery. Really important point, and this is my own professional and personal opinion, no one is their addiction inherently. It's something that they struggle with, something that they suffer. But it's not, at the end of the day, they are not their addiction. So, if somebody is curious about this thing, educate yourself, find a therapist, explore what recovery looks like for you. It's different for everyone. If you see somebody suffering, have compassion. Feel that pain. Try to have that conversation. It's going to be awkward, it's going to be weird, but please try. If somebody would have that conversation with my mom, Maybe she would still be around. Thank you.